Well, good evening, family. God bless you. It's great to be here as we are still in this particular series of rest. And I am thankful that you are here. And I love you very much. You're going to need your Bible and something to write on. And let's get right to it. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this message. We thank you, Father, that distractions are removed, that we are transforming the atmosphere with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that we can enter in and receive from you in this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We've been in this series now for quite a long time, probably the longest series as a collective whole that that I have been diving into outside of probably forgiveness. But in this particular message, what is so profound to me is the ability to move in rest and grow into it, come to a place of living in it, and then also to see what it produces. Now, what do I mean by this? Have you ever thought about what something produces in your life? For example, I lost my thought. However, if you look at what is in your life, let's say that you bought a new appliance for your kitchen and it produces more effective and efficiency of your time. Restlessness produces many things. It steals much more. But because it has been such a norm for so many, they are not aware of the effects, the impact, or the influence that it has. Rest, too, can produce in your life. So, as I've been preparing this message, I've been looking around at what is producing what in my life. What is my schedule producing? What are my relationships producing? Fruit or not? What is producing an outflow? Right now, the, the change in the season is producing an itch in my nose. But what is being produced in your life? When you start to take that inventory, and I know we've talked about inventories before, but when you really start to look, what is this producing? Is this a wise investment of my time? Not only is it a wise investment, is this a wise use of my time? If it's not an investment, then what is it? So what does rest produce? When you're able to see these things that I'm going to share with you, then I believe you will be as determined as I have been to move, to get to, live in and maintain life from this place. If there is something in my life that is not producing fruit, I don't allow it. Why? Because it comes with sucker branches and what do the sucker branches do? They suck energy, they suck the water. When you start to look at the foxes and the vines and you begin to see all of these things around, what are they producing? Rest produces much in the inner man. And I'm gonna show you, I probably will be using this again as I've got it right here, the inner man. Okay, so the inner man, we know the inner man, the outer man, and the outer, outer man. Rest is where we move from the inner man. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13.
1 Corinthians 13. Starting in verse 4, I'm going to show you something. Mm. Well, in the King James, and it depends on which... I don't have another one around me. They're all downstairs. In different varieties of King James and the NIV, you will see the word charity and some will have love. So we'll just go with this. But in 13.4, okay, because it says in, in 2, if I have not charity, I am nothing. But if I have not love, I have nothing. Um, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity the envy not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in all truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Love never fails. But where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanquish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Rest produces, and they use they word they use the word suffereth long or patience. Love is patient, love is kind. Okay, so when you look at what love produces or what rest produces. Love and rest go hand in hand. Love allows us to be entering into rest, but rest produces love. We can see that when people are at rest, they're more forgiving, more walking in love, more patient, which love is patient. And so there is an outflow that comes <coughs> when we move from a platform of rest, which is why society in the operation of the kingdom of darkness does not want us to be getting to a place of rest because love moves in rest. If you are restless, think about this, if you are restless, and let's just say you have little children, what comes out of you toward your children? Many that are restless are agitated, irritated, easily provoked, easily triggered, stressed out, and all of that comes out. The same with rest. When we look at one to another, it now is becoming even more, more of a mission to get to a place of rest because of what it produces. Rest produces what restlessness cannot. Tired, angry, miserable, cranky people do not walk in love. There's, they're, what they're producing is, is not what we want over here. So, how's your love level? Love is known by its temperature, hot or cold. Where did the love go? What's love got to do with it? Everything. How are we resting? If we're not even getting any rest to sleep then, and our minds aren't resting, then obviously we have no patience for anyone or anything else. There's no rest. There's no peace. There is no room for grace or mercy. There is no room for forgiveness or mistakes. Many of you probably grew up in an environment much like that. No rest or peace in the home. We have got to do everything we can to be restored in rest. Turn with me to the book of John chapter 4.
Okay. We're going to dive into a few things here. Chapter 4 of John. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. The Pharisees have to be some of the most restless people outside of politicians, of course. But, I mean, busybodies, meddling, da 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 give it a rest. So when the Lord knew that, when the, therefore, the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard. So there's a method of how they heard. So they heard, and Jesus knew how they, how they heard. Well, he left, to, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. So he went back. Again. So he was already there. He's there again. And he, and he must needs go through Samaria. So he had to go through and pass through this particular area. Then come into a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied with this journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour, which would be 12 o'clock, which is one of the watches and we pray that daily. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me, a, give me to drink. You imagine that today. <laughs> For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. So now we've got one man saying, give me a drink and other people buying meat. I mean, meat's about to be outlawed in many places, by the way. So meat, dairy, so those of you that eat eggs like milk and eat cheese, you, you better sort that out because many of you government officials are so restless in their move, can't have cows because they fart. I bet the same people do that as well, you know, but, but they, they were into the city to buy, to buy meat. So apparently meat was not a bad thing. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh me, uh, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, and wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From when, from whence is thou that, thou that living water? Aren't thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank there, there of himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whatso, whosoever drinketh of this water, shall thirst again. But whosoever, whosoever, drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be shall be in a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. He brought rest. He is our place of rest, our refuge. But not only in this transaction as we can be moving forward, we move forward and we see if you go forward to, to verse 20, 20, 28, the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. There's another female evangelist. Okay, so um, who knew? But in the element of this, rest produces tolerance. What we're seeing and witnessing all over the world today, the level of intolerance 
There's no rest. The people that are operating in all of these things have absolutely no rest and no peace within them. Sad, miserable people that are so young and too young to be so miserable. And they have no tolerance. There is no grace and there is no mercy. For us as believers, it will require tolerance. It is incredible how intolerant many believers are, intolerant to so many things. But we're told to go out into the world. How can you be intolerant and then go talk to people? See, we spend a lot of time talking about people, but do you talk to the people? Imagine if Jesus just talked about this woman and never talked to her. Her life wouldn't have been changed. There would be no testimony for her to share. There would be no rest for her or anyone around her. His tolerance by rest moved in a way that he was able to share and her life was transformed. Whose life would be transformed by you coming to a greater place in the Lord? A lot of times we expect the people around us to change, but they can't change until we do. We get mad at the people in the world, expecting the people in the world to do better, but they don't have Christ. How can they do better? It's almost as though we've got our, our feet on people's heads while they're drowning, telling them to get out, and they can't because we're squashing them. Restless operates that way. Rest produces a place of tolerance that we can now at least listen and come to an understanding. We don't need to agree. I can understand your point. I can understand why you believe this. Did you know that most of the women that march at these, at these pro-life rallies have had abortions? That's why they're there. It's not the people that never have. It's the people that have, the women that have. When we move from rest, we can tolerate something a little bit more. If you've ever gone on a road trip with children, you know how they poke and 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 poke? <laughs> she does after a while you lose your rest you lose your peace you start to get agitated lose tolerance are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet you will be there when you take your last breath in the meantime rest God's got this now does it mean we tolerate certain things no Two separate things. Whatever you tolerate will continue. If you tolerate people to bring their garbage into your life, then your house and your life will stink like the garbage brought in. But when we move from a place of rest, we have a tolerance for the misgivings of other people. It does not mean that we welcome them to squat in our lives, but what it does mean is that we can, we can move from a place above here and not a place of down here where we are so intolerant because we're so restless. We can at least move to a place of, of understanding where someone is because rest produces tolerance that, okay, now we've got something to work with to solve a problem. Intolerant people are never really into any ability of delivering or providing or being active in any type of solutions because they're too intolerant to want a solution. They are the problem and they pride themselves on being the problem and many are paid to be the problem. So if Jesus were not rest, were, were not who he was walking in it, he would have had no tolerance for the woman. None, none, no tolerance at all. He never would have been able to have that conversation. Many marriages today are failing because we've so become intolerant. Intolerant. Not really looking at what we are doing at all. Hmm. 
our relationships as a whole, our society as a whole is not moving in rest. It's moving from intolerance, hate, and restlessness. The enemy's winning, we may say. But we won't because we win. If you want to hear from the Lord, we know that Jesus, that Jesus tells us, well, that no man can serve two masters. He will love one and hate the other or hate the other and love one. But we also know that he has said, my sheep hear my voice. Rest produces a hearing from God, a stillness. People whose minds are, are running, we've got this way and this way and this way in there. And you see that they're always going and going and going and going, but they're not even the right brain's moving different than the left brain, the logic and the emotion and the logic and the emotion, and there's no balance, and it's fragmented all the time. There really is no hearing from God because there cannot be, because restlessness is the overriding operation, and a mind not at rest is not at peace, and God is of peace. And it, when we look at when Jesus says, my shepherd, hear my voice, well, what are you listening to? If you are not at rest and snapping and moving in this direction, we've got to come to a place of resolving that. God's got this. It's a matter of us coming to that place of rest, to rest in, in the truth that God's got this. It is moving from the outer man to the inner man. So here is where rest is. Okay, Here is where the hearing is from our Lord. Rest produces rest. It moves in itself. When we move in a hearing from God, God is rest. When you rest in God and God speaks, you can be moving in rest and everything gets done. Not frantic, not manic, not in any way that that is, is, is a rush or a hurry or a harried operation. Everything always gets done. And you will find that it gets done in ways that you could never have done otherwise. You're hearing from the Lord is a requirement for moving in rest. Those of you that have a call on your life, you, you have to get yourself in order. Because you will never complete anything for God in restless, and the enemy will make certain that you always stay restless. It's a challenge. You have to move everything out, and when you do, and, and there's nothing to be thinking about, you will know that you've arrived at, a, at another level, another place. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Ask a man if he's thinking something or what he's thinking and he says nothing. Ladies, he's not lying. It's just that for women, every single thought is all connected to every single thought. These are, these are women's thoughts. Every single thought is connected to every single thought is connected, but it's all connected to an emotion. It's all connected to an emotion. Here's a man's thoughts. Each one is individual and separate. So he does one thing at a time because he's thinking about that one thing. That one thing requires everything within him to do the one thing, to do the one thing, to do the one thing. Everything over here will do the da 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 And you start to see the issues that arise. So even after some type of an argument that a man and a woman have, because we know there's only two genders, the woman will carry it around a lot longer than the man because now the man can go back to thinking on this thing. Two men can go have a fight in a parking lot over who's the better quarterback, come in and be best friends. Okay, but for women who have any type of a situation, the emotions all will still be moving in with every thought and every thought has an emotion connected to it. So it takes women a lot longer to dismantle all of these things to then get to a place of rest. So it is very important that we recognize these things so that we can stay protected in a place of peace and rest. So husbands, if your wife is not resting, that is that I'm, I'm going to be bold to say that that is something for you to be praying about because she carries things a lot different than you do. And when you understand this, your prayer points now can be opening up to pray for her, which guess what? A happy wife's a happy life. So now we start to see that now we can both be in agreement, hearing from the Holy Spirit, moving in tolerance toward one another and being patient and kind and loving. 
We have to we have to start recognizing what we're thinking on now. And if we know in Second Corinthians ten five that we must take every thought captive. So every thought captive is linked to an emotion, is linked to this that produces serotonin or cortisol within our bodies that will either move us here or here. Where are we going? Rest produces things for the inner man to move outward. Restless produces outward man to stay outward. So when we move in this direction, we move now aware of these things. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, still there, um, chapter 9. Thirty-six. Then I'm going to start in in thirty-five. Nine thirty-five, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Every. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as having no shepherd. If Jesus were not rest and he were like most of the people today, oh, well, they fainted. That's their own problem. Too bad for them, right? I mean, a 65-year-old Jewish man was just was was just murdered. They they designated it as a homicide at one of these non non-event events that they're calling passionate. Right. <laughs> Jesus had compassion on them. When we move in a place of rest and from a place of rest, now we can be moving to be beyond ourselves. Restless people are never beyond themselves. They're trapped in the bondage of self within it by everything that it breeds, okay? And many of you grew up in homes like this, using that example again. So when we are able to get to that place, now we can think. Now we can be moving from a place beyond ourselves for something so much greater and broader than we were and where we were. This is why when you realize that there is a place of rest and we take this journey to get there, when you get there, now you're able to see people. Now you're able to have a conversation with them. That the restlessness in you is not prejudging, pre-qualifying. Well, you know, they're not husband material because they don't wear this type of gene. They they wear they wear that instead of this. Oh, you know, I mean all of these worldly things that people get caught up caught up in. Um, but when we move from a place of rest, we can see people. We can see them as God's creation. We can see them for whether they are toxic or broken. We can see them with compassion, knowing that they need a savior. Rest produces compassion. Restlessness does not. It isn't too intolerant to have compassion on anyone. It matters not someone's plight. It matters not what they've gone through. It matters not because Restless really is heartlessness in many ways. Restless is not a definition of heartless, and heartless is not a definition of restless, but the two coincide within one another. So Jesus had compassion on them. Do you think that if Jesus were not already getting away to spend time with the Father, if he were not walking in love and was not love, that he would be able to have any care for any people? If we lay claim to being followers of Yeshua and yet have no compassion on people, we need to investigate that. We are the light. 
We're the salt of the earth. Where is it? People are in desperate need. People are crying out. We see it even even here. He went to all the to all the cities and villages and healed every every sickness and every disease. Multitudes, multitudes would be more than 3. When he saw them he was moved because they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. They had no help. They had no, they're, they're just, look, look around. How could you not have compassion? There are many people suffering many atrocities today. You may not be called to be the boots on the ground to help in that particular time of need, but in your own circle, in your own sphere of influence, the rest that you walk in can most definitely have an impact. Are your children going through something? Are your parents going through something? Are your neighbors going through something? When we all position ourselves in a place of rest, now we can be moving as one body of believers from a strength position of rest to be producing what is necessary on this earth. Rest produces what restlessness cannot. So, let me explain this. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. Verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Rest and love produce. We can see that love produces us an opportunity to move into rest. Rest produces more opportunity to love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. The atrocities that we're seeing all around the world is caused by people that know not God. They have no love. They're missing the greatest element of what is the glue that holds all things together, and that is love. Fragmented people with fragmented souls living in restless, fighting for an agenda that's going to be to an early death, maybe not by a firearm, but by their hearts failing them because there's nothing in them that is of God. There's nothing except his creation of them in his DNA, but in the realm of what they've chosen, they've chosen a life, a path of restlessness that leads to an early death. We've discussed this throughout of this entire series. There's no hope in restlessness. There's no compassion and restlessness. There is no future in restlessness, and there is no rest in restlessness. Love produces rest, produces, produces rest, or love. So restlessness cannot produce rest. Rest produces rest. Rest begets rest. When you are aware of this and you know the non-negotiables of rest, this is not bringing me rest or peace, now you recognize it. But many people don't know what to talk about if they're not talking about garbage things. What do they talk about? They've not yet grown into talking about something other than garbage. Nonsense, gossip, slander, the neighbors, the this, the that, whatever's happening in this, this, this. And there used to be a TV show called GCB, Good Christian Itches, and it was all making a mockery of, of the body of Christ. Some truth to it, sad to say running around being busybodies, talking about all these things. It's not restless. It's not rest. It's restlessness. Rest produces rest. When you get to that place, then you will be looking and knowing that the air smells better, that, that what you're doing is producing more, that you are moving in a way to be a producer for God's kingdom. You can move to be a multiplier and advancer in ways that you cannot, living in restless. Because restless is a divider. So what are you producing today? What do you need to do today to start producing? In First, first Peter, I'm going to give you this one before I'm finished for this particular message. In First Peter 5, I'm going to show you this. Uh, 
1 Peter 5. I'm going to start in three or in five. Actually, no, it's not five, it's six. Five, six of first Peter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Many of you are restless because you're trying to produce your own miracles and market yourself. You don't need to do that. You need to you need to humble yourself before God. God exalts. We just don't want to be told that because we don't think we should have to pay the price or go through any testing. We don't want to do that. Well, I did. Yeah, nobody cares. Just being real, they don't because they're too busy caring about themselves and what they look like. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. It's God that does the exalting. Casting all you care upon him for he careth for you. All right, God, well, I can put it to you. And guess what? God will provide. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The enemy is always operating from a place of opportunity. Opportunity to drag you back. An opportunity to tear you down. An opportunity to get you think on, on lower things, carnal things, things of mammon. Opportunity to get you to divide yourself from yourself to walk against an enmity with God. An opportunity for you to be sowing seeds of discord and division among the brethren. The enemy is always operating from an a, a, advantage point of opportunity. When you come to rest, you will recognize the opportunities for you to resist the devil and he will flee. Don't listen to it. Don't engage. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee. Those opportunities for you to produce more will be there because you will be operating in a totally different place than you were before. Your patience will be moving through people or with people because you'll recognize that they are where they are until they grow. You'll be granting them grace and mercy to grow. You'll be moving in a place where you don't need to agree. You can be tolerant to someone's opinion, not agreeing and not being mad because theirs isn't what yours is. Why do you care if their opinion isn't what yours is? It's a waste of your time to even bother to care about something so small. Well, you know, they don't think like I do. Praise God they don't. What are you thinking of? <laughs> We often want everybody to be just like us. Well, they should look just like us. Why? Why? Why are we not celebrating the diversity of God's creation, having compassion on the people, knowing that we all fall short? When you start moving in this place, knowing your non-negotiables, setting your day, you've got it all written out, what you will accomplish with the Lord, by the Lord, for the Lord, for His name's sake and glory. When you're moving in this direction, all of this is noise. All of this would just cause you to have a problem internally that you don't need. When you start producing from a place of rest, the outflow will be so great and it will be so multiplied in a way that you will be amazed. And isn't it time for you to be amazed? It is. And now is your time to be moving in rest, to be producing rest within rest, to love and to see what God does in that. That's it for today. Let's pray. Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus. That you move us to a place of rest. That as we move with you as we take these steps. That you help us to produce rest within itself, within us. Move our hearts and rest to compassion upon others. Not justifying, but having compassion on them. Because they are where they are and they need help. We thank you too, Father, that as you grow us, we're moving to a new place with you. We thank you for the opportunity to rest, the opportunity to walk in compassion, the opportunity to love, the opportunity to give, the opportunity to grow, the opportunity to love, the opportunity to multiply your kingdom right here as we are. So we thank you, Father, that you're moving in our lives. We thank you, Father, that you've got this. So we rest in you, our Lord and Savior. We thank you that you are our shepherd, leading and guiding us, and that we hear your voice and that we are quick to obey. 
We thank you, Father, for these things, and we pray them all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. These messages are designed to help you get from where you were last week and yesterday to this new place. So begin to pray for the manifestation of rest within you. It's already there. You just need to manifest it. Love is already within you. You just need to manifest it. Patience is already within you. As you pray that God manifest, the Holy Spirit manifest love within you, you will be patient. And then you can move in rest giving that to others. Impatient people can't give patience. Lo unloving people can't give love. And restless people have no rest to give. So move in those directions and making those some prayer points so that you can be moving to a greater place to be used by God to do more. As you go forward, you know, we do pray every day. Every day we pray at the 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's one of the prayer watches for Central Time. And we, we pray for the body of Christ, for our leaders, and we pray from a power position of rest. We are all moving and advancing God's kingdom from various parts of the earth, and so I welcome you to join us, a body of believers. You can learn more about that at julieblundministries.org. And, you know, the other thing is that if you've not yet clicked that button to subscribe, please do. Or rather, I just look at you as a ministry partner. We are doing so much in this ministry and believing God for so many great things. And, and there's a lot of times when I'm up praying the 3 or the 6 a.m. watch. And that the Lord will give a word that needs to be delivered. And you don't want to miss what the Lord would have for you. There may be something in it that is life transforming that you need, that you need to be in the know of. And so it's all by the Holy Spirit. So you want to make certain if you have not yet... That that you do just click that button so that you receive the messages as they are delivered and you know what please like and share these messages and comment it really will help get the gospel out in these times there's a lot of things that, that I know that the enemy is doing to hide and block but you know what we will prevail and with your help it just will really help us a lot to if it just will help let me just be clear you all know this but please please help me share the, these messages so that other people too can live in rest and peace and know the truth of the, our Lord and Savior. And as you go forward, be a giver. This ministry does have needs. It costs us five grand a month to be operational. And so we just need help. There's no way around that. And I need monthly partners who will, who will, who will commit to being a monthly partner so that we can continue to grow and expand and get these books published. I have five books that are on Amazon and in other places working on other things, but everything is a process that takes time and costs money. And you already all know or are familiar with the fights that I've had with these un universities. And so it's a multi-front battle that I have been in and God is providing and making the way. But in order for this to continue, it does require faithful partners. And it is not my ministry. This is the Lord's ministry that he's called me to. And I believe that, that he's called you as well to to be used by him in whatever capacity. So please, wherever you are getting fed, be a giver. Just let that be known that you are a giver. Don't need to talk about it. Be faithful, be obedient, and I believe that God will be will be blessing you as you step out by faith to honor him. And also, one more final thing. Please keep me in prayer. Simple. Keep me in prayer. Pray for strength, energy, spirit to endure, and and I know we're going through a lot of things, and, and I'm no different than any of you in needing prayer and, and staying firm without compromise for the last day. So I want you to know how much I really appreciate all of you, that, that you're a big part of this, you're why I'm here doing all of this, I love Jesus, and, and that really is the foundation of, of why everything is done the way that it is, to share the love of Him and to help us all grow and know Him greater in these times. So that is that for today. Know that I love you all. I'm praying for you. And I look forward to what he has next. And Miss Truffles is still down here chewing on her bully stick. So praise God it's a bully stick and not my feet. Amen. I'll see you soon. Bye everybody. Have a great day.